As an electronic student and or enthusiast, perhaps one of the most important items in your toolbox is the breadboard. It's used in all of our stamps and class text, including what's a microcontroller and robotics with the Bobot, as a place to wire our circuits. But have you ever given any thought to the inner workings of this little white board or how it came to be? Well, whether you have or you haven't, we're going to go through the history of the breadboard as well as its uses today. Now, the term breadboard is actually quite literal. The first breadboards were really blocks of wood that were used for cutting bread. And early electronic components such as transformers and tube sockets were mounted to them. Now these components were then connected using a technique called point-to-point -point construction, in which the wires of these electronic components were soldered to copper strips that were either nailed or screwed to the underside of the board. Now you may ask yourself, why breadboards? And the answer is simple. It was the early 1900s and breadboards were cheap, easy to obtain, and sturdy enough to support the monstrous early electronic components. Today, breadboards are made of plastic and they're mainly used for experimentation. They provide a great way to prototype your project before moving it to a final PCB design. Or, like in our Stamps and Class series, they provide a blank canvas for you to construct, unconstruct, and reconstruct all types of fun electronic projects and inventions. Now, breadboards also come in a variety of shapes and sizes, and the type that you use for your project will completely depend on your preferences. Here we have the breadboard that's used on both the homework board and the Board of Education. Normally, there's an adhesive backing which can be used for mounting the breadboard onto a platform for your project and also protects the back of the board from touching undesired conductive material. If you remove the adhesive backing, however, you'll see a bunch of metal rows, which are really metal clips. If you poke one out, you can see what it looks like. Each of these clips correspond to one of these holes, giving your circuit a secure connection. So each time you're plugging a wire into a hole on the breadboard, you're really plugging it into one of these clips. Since each clip is connected through a single piece of metal, each hole in these horizontal rows are connected. However, take a look at this break down the middle. Since the metal strip is no longer connected, the holes on this side of the board won't be connected to those on this side. It's important to mention that a horizontal connection is not always the case. For example, let's take a look at these interlocking breadboards. These skinny pieces are generally used for providing power and ground connections to your circuit. Note the red and black lines. These rows are connected vertically, with the black or ground connection running down one side, and the red or power connection running down the other. You may notice that there is a break in the power strip while the ground strip is connected all the way down. This is designed so that you can supply two different voltages to your circuit, which comes in handy when you have sensors that require 5 volts of power communicating with a microcontroller that might only be rated for 3.3 volts. Say, however, you want to apply one voltage to this entire power strip. All you have to do is connect the two separated sockets with a wire. Now an electrical connection is present across this bridge, which means that any voltage applied to any of these sockets will supply that same voltage to this entire row. As with anything in math or science, a little bit of proof goes a long way. So let's take a look at a couple of example breadboard setups using some LEDs, resistors, and a power supply. An LED will be easy to see if there is an electrical connection present since the LED will glow if power is applied to it. So here's our connection. We have a battery connected to the far left rows, supplying 9 volts of power. A current limiting resistor is connected to the positive lead of the LED, and the negative lead is connected to ground. Once we connect power, the light comes on. Now remember that each socket in a horizontal row is electrically connected. 
So what do you think would happen if we added a second LED in the same horizontal rows as the first one? If you guessed that the second LED would come on, you would be correct. Now what if we change the setup so it looks like this? Is that the same? Yes. Remember that rows across this bridge are not electrically connected, so it's the same as connecting the LED in the same vertical row. Now here's one last quiz, just to make sure that you all are playing along at home. Here was our original circuit. If we change it to this, will it be electrically connected? Nope. Even though these are all in the same horizontal row, remember that the connection breaks down the middle. And that's the basics of breadboarding. Now get out there and start prototyping.